Welcome back to AP Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug and in this video we're going to be looking at molecular structure and specifically how to continue writing Lewis electron dot structures in this particular video. So let's start with a little bit of, of a review here. Let's try HCN. So hydrogen cyanide or hydrocyanic acid. We're going to start by uh, writing the three elements there. H, hydrogen, C for carbon, and N for nitrogen. And I always like to start with uh, the hydrogen. Don't forget that every hydrogen supplies one valence electron. It's stable with two. So I'll put one dot there for the hydrogen. The carbon has four. So I'm going to arrange the four dots around the carbon. And then the nitrogen has five because it's a group 15. So we'll put those there. Now remember, everything other than the hydrogen is striving for eight. And the hydrogen is striving for two, which it, it seems to have, as you can see here. So the carbon only has six, the way it's drawn, and the nitrogen only has six, the way it's drawn. So I'm going to start moving some dots around. So I'm going to start by moving these two dots up here over to the middle, just like that. And so the carbon in the middle still has six, but the nitrogen is now up to eight. So I'm improving. I need to move a couple of dots from nitrogen, maybe over here, into the middle, like this. And now both the carbon and the nitrogen have eight. And the hydrogen, of course, has, uh, has two. So when I draw this a little bit more organized here, it's going to look like this. And so we have our Lewis electron dot diagram for hydrogen cyanide, HCN. Now, don't forget, whenever you draw one of these, it's always a good idea to double check the formal charges. So we'll start with the hydrogen here. We know that a hydrogen, according to the periodic table, has one valence electron. And how many does it have? Well, the one bond just counts for a one. So when we subtract that, it's zero. So that's good. You're trying for zeros here. This is one case where you want to have a zero. Now carbon, we know that according to the periodic table, it has four. And how many does it have? Well, one, two, three, four is, is what we subtract. So every bond that is touching that atom counts for one. So four minus four is zero. So that's good. And then the nitrogen here normally has five according to the periodic table. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. So that's minus five equals zero. Don't forget every unshared electron pair or unshared electron counts as the whole thing there. So every uh, unshared electron pair counts as, as two. So uh, five minus five is zero. We have all zeros here, so that's good. That's what you want. So we can be fairly um, fairly assured that this is the best Lewis electron dot diagram for that molecule. Now, sometimes we have to break the octet rule. You know, sometimes there's no way around it. Uh, so let's try xenon tetrafluoride as a good example of an exception to the octet rule. Now once again, we're going to stick xenon in the middle with the four fluorines around it. Now the periodic table tells us that, that every fluorine has seven dots. So I'll put seven around that one up there, seven over here, seven down at the one on the bottom, and then seven over there. So that's 28 dots. Now the xenon, we know, is a noble gas, so it has eight. So we'll stick eight dots around the xenon. There's one, two, three, four. Do you see a problem here? We've only stuck four of the eight valence electrons for xenon up here, and we're already out of room. There's no other place to put them. So what do we do? Well, if you run out of room, put those extra dots as unshared pairs excuse me, it's unshared pairs on the central atom. So 5, 6, 7, and 8 will go right there. So once again, if you run out of room, place the extra electrons as unshared pairs on the central atom. So when you draw this, I'm going to clean this up a little bit, it's going to like, look like this. So we have four shared pairs, four single bonds uh, attached to the xenon, with two unshared pairs on there as well. Now let's check the formal charge to make sure that this is going to make sense, so that this is the best structure for this molecule. So we'll start with the fluorine here. Fluorine normally has seven, according to the periodic table, and it has one, two, three, 
4, 5, 6, 7. So we subtract the 7, and sure enough, it's 0. So that's a good thing. Xenon down here, the periodic table says it should have 8. And how many does it have? 1, 2, 3, 4. And then the unshared pairs count for 5, 6, 7, and 8. So subtract that out. Sure enough, they're both zeros. And I'm not going to do all the fluorine atoms because they're essentially identical as you go around the, the molecule. If you want to double check those, you're certainly welcome to do so. Let's try another one. Sulfur tetrafluoride. So this is a very similar molecule. We're going to put sulfur in the middle with four fluorine surrounding it. And like I did last time, I'm going to start with the atoms on the outside and work my way in. That's a pretty good uh, habit to get into. So every fluorine will get seven dots according to the periodic table. And now the sulfur gets six because it's in group 16. So we have one, two, three, four. And do you see the problem again? We're out of room. So where do we put five and six? Well, following the rule from last time, we put the extra electrons as an unshared pair on the central atom. So five and six go right here. So when we clean this up, this is the Lewis electron dot diagram for sulfur, sulfur tetrafluoride. Now let's check the formal charge again to make sure we're in good shape. For fluorine, we have normally seven according to the periodic table. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that we subtract from that to give us zero. So that's good. And then the sulfur, according to the table, has six. And then we subtract one, two, three, four. And then the unshared pair counts for five and six. So sure enough, that's a zero as well. So this is a good structure. Let's try one more example here. Phosphorus pentachloride. Now this is an interesting example because we have more than four atoms branching out from the central atom. If you do some arithmetic, you know that one single bond gets has two electrons in it. So if you have more than four atoms uh, stuck onto a single central atom, you're going to have more than eight on that central atom. That's, there's just no way around it. So we're going to have to break the octet rule in this case. So I'm going to arrange it like this. Every chlorine gets seven according to the periodic table. So we have seven, 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 seven. And now the phosphorus gets five because it's in group 15. So one, two, three, four, and five. And every chlorine has eight. The phosphorus has more than eight, but there's no way around that. So when I clean this up, it's going to look something like that. And once again, if we check the formal charge, we'll start with the chlorine here. Uh, it normally has seven according to the table. And how many does it have? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, and the bond counts for that seventh. So, yep, we got a zero on that one. And the phosphorus normally has five. And we subtract one, two, three, four, five. So, yep, that's a zero as well. So hopefully at this point, you have uh, understood how to... Uh, draw Lewis structures or Lewis electron dot diagrams as they're called on the AP exam. And I hope that you also understand how these exceptions work when you have exceptions to the octet rule. Whenever you run out of room, you have to stick those extra dots as unshared pairs on the central atom. And sometimes you have a case like phosphorus pentachloride where the central atom has more than five bonds just by the nature of the, of the identity of the molecule. Well, hope you've learned something. If you have, please smash that uh, like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel where you can enjoy the entire uh, AP Chemistry um, curriculum on here. And uh, join me in the future where I hope you can get a five and we can learn some more chemistry together.